Awesome. So, connection, life, death, and ritual. We're going to start things off with a little connection today. I'd love you to turn to someone that you don't know and say a quick, hi, how's it going, my name is. If you've got 10 seconds, go. Beautiful. Thank you so much for doing that. I'm really glad you did that. Now you're connected to each other, to the people around you. Fabulous. Now we're going to do a little connection as a group, as an audience. We're going to come together as a community. And we're going to do it through singing. Don't be alarmed. Anything you've been told previously that you are not a singer was untrue. I am the expert. I'm telling you, you are a singer. After the count of three in a moment, we are going to make a sound, a note that comes out of your mouth. Whatever note it is, is going to be perfect. And we're going to create a cacophony of awesome together. It's going to bring us together as one group, as an audience and a community. So please, I ask you to with a, take a deep breath and, and just let's do it. Uh, after the count of three, one, two, three. Ah, yes. Awesome. Okay, thank you very much for that. That's fantastic. I can feel you've come together and we're ready to rock the day. Any conversation regarding ritual in Australia needs to acknowledge that this continent has been home to one of the oldest living cultures in the world. I would like to pay my respects my deepest respects to the elders of this country, and I would like to extend my respects to any Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander and First Nations people here today. That culture, connection to country, languages, music, art, but also the ceremony, the ritual, which is enmeshed in life, so rich, so lucky, we should be so respectful. What about you all? How does ritual happen in your life? Perhaps you're like me, you grew up in a religious household where religious ceremonies um, happened all the time. So baptisms, uh, marriages, funerals, it was a part of my family's values. We went to church every weekend. Or perhaps you are familiar with um, the rituals connected to holy days, so Diwali or Hanukkah or Easter. As this century rolls on, people are reporting less of a connection to community. And less and less people are reporting as being religious, which leaves a void in the way that we orient towards something that is greater than ourselves. So ritual can be an expression of your values. It can also help you, as it's helped me, to deal with the stresses and anxiety of, of modern day life. Wow, that pandemic, hey, what a stressful time, and working during that. Uh, I also, uh, as well as having a stressful job, lived at work, and so it was really hard for me to split the home uh, and work balance to get it right, uh, and I was really struggling with it. So I had recently read a book called The Power of Ritual, um, Turning Everyday Activities into Soulful Practices by Casper to Kyle. Great book. And so I thought, I'm going to see if I can reclaim myself some ritual and if I can create a pre-work and a post-work ritual to help me deal with the stresses of life. So I'm in my house. It's like 100 metres to the office. <laughs> but I, um, I set a positive intention for the day and I set off out my door, down the path, down the hill, uh, out a couple of streets, back to the work building and into my office. And as I'm mindfully walking, taking in the day, the sights, the sounds, the smells, the colours, feeling that warmth on my face, I'm imbuing positivity into the encounters I was going to have during the day. And I get to the office and I'm feeling great. The end of the day comes around, whenever that was going to be, and I head off on the reverse route home. And again, mindfully thinking about the uh, things that went well in my day and celebrating them. Contemplating the challenges. What could I have done differently? How could that have worked better? 
And as I was contemplating all of that on the way home and after doing it for a while, it actually helped me to, to have a better work-life balance and to leave the stresses um, of work at the door. There are many things that ritual can help us with when it comes to stress. Singing is another one. Um, there was a great study by Harvard Business School uh, where they got a group of people and uh, they asked them to sing Don't Stop Believing by Journey, the rock band. You know that song? Don't stop believing. Great song. Anyway, so um, they asked, they split the group into two and they asked half of the group to do a ritual, to create a ritual. And it was to draw a picture and to sprinkle some salt on that picture. So kind of weird, not really meaning anything, but it's a ritual. And the other group, they put in a room and said, you're going to sing in a moment, and they just left them be. The researchers measured heart rate, um, levels of anxiety, and also um, the performance of the song. So that's pretty nerve-wracking. Um, and it turned out that the group who did the ritual, um, not only were their, their heart rate was less, uh, they reported less anxiety, but they sang better than the group who didn't do the ritual. Pretty amazing. Sports psychologists also report that pre-game sports rituals are beneficial for athletes. Rafael Nadal, have you seen him do his pre-ritual, pre-game rituals um, on the tennis uh, broadcasts? He has around 19, apparently, that he does every time he plays. He has won 22 Grand Slam um, matches. Amazing. Uh, he, in his 2012 autobiography, reported that um, ritual for him is about placing himself in the match. It's about ordering his surroundings to match the order in his head. 22 grand slams, he's doing something right. End of life rituals. We all have been to funerals, we all know that experience and how uh, those rituals can help us. When I was 20, quite a while ago now, my beloved Nana died. And I'd recently rejected religion. And I, I thought to myself, I don't need to travel nine hours to go to my Nana's funeral. I can do it myself through self-reflection and being in nature. I can you know, celebrate what she meant to me. Sometime later, I actually realized the importance of being with the people who knew and loved her, of expressing our feelings together, of grieving collectively and seeing each other face to face. That ancient ritual kicks off the grieving process for people, and I really felt that I missed out on that. And it was a, le a lesson in life. Sometime later, a good friend of mine died while overseas, and he didn't have a funeral. There was no funeral. And I thought back to my experience of my nana, and I, I put the word out to my friends, and I said, we've got to do something. I need to be with you. I need to celebrate our friend's life. And so we went down to the lake, and I, I, I had a little idea for a ritual, and I was like, I'm not sure how you guys are going to take this. It feels a little woo-woo, but <laughs> I, I thought, it, I think it might help. So I got some red roses, symbolic of love, um, we listened to the music he loved. He was a DJ and he loved music. He was always giving us music. He was so generous. We listened to music. We talked about him. We, we talked about the tragedy of his loss um, together. And we did this simple ritual where we dropped flowers into the border and we silently watched as they floated away. I recently ran through this presentation with a, a friend I haven't seen in years. And afterwards she said to me, I was at that gathering. It was only a small gathering, but I'd forgotten. And she said to me, I don't know if I told you, but that meant the world to me. I, had, you know, She had lost touch with our friend through Facebook, and so she found out about his death on the television. It's the worst. And so it was really lovely to hear that she got a lot out of it, because for me, I, I felt like I had a void where in my life where he, you know, he disappeared from and it was filled with sadness. And I noticed sometimes later, sometimes later, some time later, that that sadness had been sort of changed into enduring love, which is a part of that grieving process. Another um, ritual that has been really beneficial for me in my life was surprisingly at one of the most lively and um, fun events in the world, and that was at a Burning Man event. Crazy. Um, so Burning Man 
uh, started in uh, San Francisco in the 80s, moved to the desert in Nevada in the 90s, still going. I was there in August for the first time, overwhelming but incredible. 72,000 people this year, it was amazing. Um, Burning Man has regional smaller events which are around the world, including across Australia. And most of them feature a temple burn. And it's something, the temple burn is something that has helped people around the world, myself included. In the year 2000, a structure like the one behind me, an, an artwork, was created by a team of people. And unfortunately, in the process of its creation, one of the team died in a, a motorcycle accident. And so the artwork was changed into a memorial for him. Um, other burners saw this memorial and they bought their own remembrances for their own people. And so a temple space was created for the first time, a place of contemplation. At the end of the burn, people gathered around this structure and it was burnt. In, and pe people, people were surrounding um, the experience in silence. So it's a really reverential and special experience for people. And it, it was repeated the following year, and it happens every year since then. So, and it happens around the world at the regional events as well. A couple of years ago, I experienced the death of a young person. Um, I'm a parent, and it hit me hard. It was around the same age as my daughter. And uh, I had psychological support for over a year, and while that helped me to rationalise what happened, um, I just could not seem to shift what I was feeling inside. And so I referred to my recently reclaimed um, ritual practice, and I thought, I'm going to go on a pilgrimage from Canberra to Queensland to attend Modifier, the Queensland Regional Burn, and to see if pilgrimage, the temple burn, and honouring this young person could help to heal what I was feeling inside. I wrote letters, many letters, long letters, all the thoughts and feelings I was having. I packed up my car, I set it a positive intention for this experience. I jumped in and I drove the long solo trip from Canberra to Queensland. A lot of time to think about life, the universe and everything. When I got there, I put aside time from the festivities to walk those last steps with my letters to the temple. A cubed wooden structure built by volunteers to become a vessel for messages, for remembrances, for memorials, for this special ritual. I spent time in reflection there. I read the scrawled text and messages on the inside of the structure from the, by other people who are in a similar situation to me, processing the challenges of life. I read my letters again for the last time and I committed them to the structure. As tears were running down my face, I scrawled a last message on the wall with texture and a fellow burner comforted me. At the end of the program of events on the Sunday night, it's a regional Queensland, it was actually very cold, I was surprised. Um, we all Hundreds of us crowded around the, the temple. And it had been raining, so it was a bit, start, a bit of a slow start to burn, but eventually it flickered a light, and the flames grew, and they engulfed the structure. And eventually it collapsed to the ground, and with that force, orange embers flew up into the cold, starry night sky. I watched those embers rise, and I thought, those are the remains of my letters. And as the orange embers faded to black, I felt the feelings and the thoughts I had put down in those words and what I was feeling deep at my core morph and change and release. How can ritual help you in your life? Well, you like me, it could help you with the everyday stresses to get through life and to make the most of it and live a healthy life? Or could it help our young people in the transition to adulthood in a healthy way and a celebratory way? Or in this time of climate crisis, could it help people engage with the planet and take action? 
I hope um, that me sharing my thoughts on my experiences with ritual will help you to reclaim ritual into your own life, to help you to take time out to contemplate your life, um, to give ritual a go, whether you're agnostic or spiritual, atheist, religious. Give it a go. Find the richness in that and the benefits of connecting with other people through it. And also, maybe the benefits of connecting with something larger than yourself, whether that's community, whether it's a god or deity, or whether it's this amazing planet and universe that we are lucky enough to live in. I hope you give ritual a go.